It's time to talk about lip syncing. Have I not covered that yet? Good golly. Good hello, welcome to Onion Skin. There is quite a lot to cover today, from figuring out what the mouths look like, how many there should be, the order they appear in, and how Toon Boom as a program and managing all of those drawings. There's a quite a lot of prep involved for lip syncing. So much so that unfortunately we're not going to be able to do any actual lip syncing animation today. Yes, this is going to be spread across two different videos. Today is going to be all about the drawings and next time is going to be all about syncing it up to dialogue. On the most part, it's program neutral. I am using Toon Boom here, but it doesn't really matter for the most part. If you are someone, however, that's wanting to learn how to lip sync in Toon Boom specifically, those steps are also covered. Now, first of all, we're going to need a model to work with. There we go. He's so pretty. And why is he a model? Well, because he looks like that. Oh, goodness me, that might actually be a bit much. That's better. Yay! When it comes to planning out your mouths for a lip syncing session, it can be good to know which mouths you are going to need in advance. You may have heard around and about in the past that you're going to need mouths for each syllable of speech. Particular vowels, M sounds, F sounds, all the different shapes that a mouth can make. But rather than do necessarily just that, I'm going to show you a particular formula that I like to use as my technique and I've found that have sufficed and I very rarely had to make new ones on top. It consists of 14 mouths. There's a small closed one, a wide closed one, two with teeth, gradually opening the teeth like that. There are three of the mouth gradually opening. There is then two of it moving into an O shape. So this one sort of acts as an in-between for the others. There is then usually two or maybe three states of the mouth going into a wide E sort of movement like that. And finally, at the end, there's two miscellaneous of a mouth that's good for F and V's type sounds and a L-D one. What I really like about this method is it's very smooth. It's an animation in of itself. It sort of just plays. It makes the animation process quite straightforward as a lot of the time you're sort of just moving to the next one in the sequence. So I'll show you how I drew this setup. You can see with just a, a loose brush, they're very sketchy, nothing real lines. Uh, and they're animated straight ahead. I didn't really do in-betweens with it. I turn on the onion skin here, and I have this bracket set to probably like three or so, going backwards like that. And notice that as I was working through it, there's a... Uh, the upper lip moves up a little bit, and the bottom lip moves down quite a lot. Uh, this top lip here, it gets gradually closer and closer with each one. Uh, this one stays probably about a similar distance each time it goes up. Top teeth stay stationary, yeah, they're rooted to your skull, so they don't tend to move very often. Uh, and the bottom teeth, they move quite a bit, uh, making sure that the alignment of the teeth stays the same. May want to put a tongue in there as well. I didn't in this case, because it couldn't be bothered. Uh, notice this particular style of doing them, it's the, you know, the teeth join together when it's a shut mouth. Uh, and quite important, a mouth becomes a lot more complete when you just do this little bottom lip there. Not sure why, it just, it's just nice. And consider any visual style is completely subjective. There's no hard and fast rules to it. If you want to make the top teeth move up and down, that's fine. It's, car it's a cartoon, you can, whatever. And you'll notice that when I came to inking it, that I redrew the entire thing every time. Even though the top teeth are stationary, they are being redrawn. There's that sort of subtle wobble there. It just makes it a little bit more organic. I'll show you why. This is the same set of mouths again, and I've copy-pasted the same top teeth across all of them. And it's so still to the point of feeling clinical. Again, that's fine. It saves time, but... Eh. Currently, there's 13 mouths. I know I said 14, but it's, it's a secret. We'll be making it soon. Creating these 13 so far, not a huge amount of work, probably took about mm, half an hour to rough and ink them. Not massively time consuming, but when you're prepping these for yourself, consider how easily this can feature creep. So this will have 14 shortly, but it's still just one set. They're happy mouths. Pretty much every character is going to need at least two sets, the happy mouths and sad mouths, so that they can express. So now you're at 26. But you're also probably going to need multiple angles. Most characters will appear at least front-facing, three-quarter, and profile views. So now, you're at 84 already. And that's all just for one character. So plan ahead. Choose your battles. So make a note of what those mouths are. Take a screenshot of this for reference, if you need. Uh, now let's talk about how Toon Boom organizes them specifically. So if you're new to the program, one of the hardest things to get your head around is the notion of how drawings and frames work. 
If you're already familiar with it, uh, I'm going to give you a reminder anyway, because this is probably the most uh, in-depth that it's used. So every time you make a new drawing, it is assigned a number. At the bottom of the camera view here, mouth inking dash one. As I go through, two, three, four, five, going up. So these drawing numbers are reusable. Every time I copy and paste one of these frames, so number two, for example, I pop it over here, mouth inking number two arrives. If I were to tweak the artwork at all, it will affect those changes across every time it appears. And that's what we're gonna be doing. Selecting from our little archive of drawings here for each syllable of dialogue. And where are archives kept? Well, they're kept in libraries. Uh, so you wanna go Windows, Library, and you find in the Library tab, uh, this has a few different uses which we won't really get into today, but we will be looking at the Drawing Substitution window, which is this bit here. On whatever layer you have selected, there will be a little slider. Move it up and down, and you see it goes through all of our available drawings and the number ticks up and down accordingly. I'll move out to an empty frame and slide to whatever I want, and there it is. There's a shortcut for selecting them, and that is the square brackets on your keyboard, just in between P and slash in the top right. So like how you use the lesser than, greater than arrows to scrub through the frames on the timeline, the square brackets will scrub through your drawing substitutions. These are saved inside the layer itself, so I could even go ahead and just delete all of those completely and have a fully empty timeline here, and I can still summon them back whenever I want. So that's a brief overview of how it works. I need to show you how to add new drawings before we get properly into the meat of it. And this is an important one, and it's often overlooked, is that these uh, number IDs here, they're created in the order that they are drawn in, not in the order of the timeline. So say, for example, I wanted to make a new in-between. I mentioned before that I want 14 mouths, not 13, and that's a squashed in mouth, uh, something that can transition into a closed mouth from here. Take these two images out and put them side by side like this. Make a space in the middle and draw the in-between that I want. There we go. And you'll notice that it's assigned the number 14, which isn't really where I want it to go. I want to put it at the start in number one. But number one's already taken. So what do I do? This is why I like to keep uh, all of the mouths in order sitting on the timeline because it's a good way to get a bird's eye view of everything and do any management if I need to. So I'm going to take my first mouth, pull everything out to the side and pop the first one in. So notice because it's called 14, it's at the very end of the slider, whereas I want it to be at the very start and have all the numbers shift up by one. This is where the X sheet comes into play. The X sheet is a, a huge feature. It's got tons of stuff going on. We won't go too much into it today, but one of its features is being able to rename all of the drawings and often being able to do so in mass. So here we can see all of our drawings, 14 and then one through 13. If I select everything down like that, right click and go drawings, rename by frame. There we go, it's now put it in order of the frame number that it's on. And this order down here has readjusted itself respectively. Uh, so keep in mind that this list here is stored alphabetically. So you can rename your drawings anything you want. You can name them after the, the letter of the syllable that they're named after. If you're doing hand swap outs, you can name them, you know, fist, point, etc. But keep in mind that it will be ordered alphabetically and that's usually how I'll order stuff. How conveniently I want to get to it through here, that's, that's the name it gets. If you actually want to remove one of these from your list here, as I said before, deleting the frame itself doesn't get rid of it. If you want to permanently delete something, you need to find it on the X sheet, number 15 here, drawings and delete selected drawings. Notice there's no shortcut for it, so you've got to do it the long way and it will now be gone. It is erased from the list. Uh, it uh, You can do it via the timeline, right click drawings and delete selected drawings is there. But the X sheet does seem to have all of the options as opposed to just some of them. Uh, so I would encourage just sort of building the habit now that if you are doing drawing management to just do it over there. You'll save yourself from getting stuck and animating yourself into a corner. So good mindset, do your timing and drawing layout via the timeline view and the actual drawing artwork management via the X sheet. Even though you can do it either, you can do timeline stuff over here if you want. It's art, you do you. All right, that's enough of that drawing and that program stuff. It is time to animate. First, you're gonna need some dialogue. I couldn't think of anything proper. So I've decided to use a whole bunch of fun sounding Australian place names. Oh, it's a cliffhanger, I'm so naughty. Sorry, I'm out of time. But do come back, we'll actually lip sync all of these things. I'll show you several different ways to go about it as well. Yay. The animation process is probably what you came here for originally, so yep. I look forward to having your company again.